So now we're going to take a look inside of a generic edit view and we want to look at how it functions internally so that we can override and extend some of those functions so we can take the generic edit view and turn it into a edit view that supports an owned row. So this is a review. We've, take, we've gone back a couple of lectures. This is the edit form flow, right? And I went through this in great and gory detail. So I'll just review it really quickly, right? So you're going, you, you've hit the edit button, right? So you do a get request to like slash one or slash 15. You're gonna grab that data. Oops. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go in. You're gonna load the primary key one or two or fifteen. If you didn't find it, you're gonna send in four hundred four error, and then you're gonna fill the form with old data. The user's gonna edit that data. They're gonna post the good data. Then the the form is gonna be validated, of course, according to the form rules. Remember, the model kind of deals with the back end, and the form kind of deals with the front end. So the validation is a form aspect, and then if there's an error, it goes back and allows you to re redo it. And then if there's no error in the submitted data, then we load a new model up. We, we reload the model, check to see if that model is accessible, and, and accessible is going to matter to a lot to us in a second. If, you can, if it's there and you can read it, and you're legally allowed to read it, great. Otherwise, we're going to give you a 404 as you're submitting the data, and that has to do with if they messed with the form or something, or they're submitting it to the wrong, wrong URL. But if we can get the data, we change the data, and we store the updated data, and then we do the success URL, right? And so that, that's the basic form flow. We did that before. We did that with every one of our CRUDs. And we also looked at this documentation in the generic list view. It could be in the, some of the edit views. At some point, you will see in the Django documentation, it's telling you how this class is functioning internally, how it's working its own magic inside itself. And it's, this is method flowchart. First, it's going to call setup. Then it's called dispatch. Check to see if the method's allowed. Get its template name. Get a query set. Load the data from the database. Get the context object name. Get the context data. And then render to response. And so you might say, why are they showing us all this? And the answer is because we can get our hands in and mess with these things. And these are like our access points into this generic list view class that allow us to dig in and make changes. And so if we were to look at that same picture and think of it from the point of view of which methods are being called at the moment where this generic edit, in this case, it's gonna be an edit view, this generic edit view is happening. So here we go. So the get request comes in, it's got some primary key, so it does a get query set, and it reads this thing, and then it reads it using get query set. It's, it's still reading it, but it happens to be doing it in a method called get query set. And if get query set works, or doesn't, then it keeps on going. Then as it's rendering the template, it's going to get the context data by calling a method called get context data. That's another place that we're going to play with, and we're gonna, we're gonna inject ourselves into get context data. Then uh, we'll do the edit, the post will come in, and then it's gonna do validation, but it does it in a method called form valid. So the first thing that happens upon the receipt of post is it checks to see if the form is valid. We're going to add our own little code into form valid as well. If it goes back, it does, it does a render, so it's gonna use get context data. If, if it is good, there's no error, then it's going to actually call get query set again to get the data, and then it's gonna modify the data, and then it's gonna store the data. There's some name for this, but I didn't put it in. The point is, each of these moments where there's something critical going on, form valid get query set, that's a place where we can extend the behavior of this built-in class without knowing too much about the class. And I showed you at the end of a few lectures ago, this crazy override. I did this crazy, crazy override where I made this weird equine view and I have a model of car and a, and a template name. And then I'm overriding get query set. So this is extending generic list view, but instead of using the get query set that's in generic list view, we're going to call our own get query set so instead of reading car objects, we're going to read horse objects. 
and then we're going to return a list of them. And that's what the get query set has to do. The, the rule of get query set is you get called, you have to return a list. If we didn't write this code, it would do this except with car. But we did write this code. Why? Because we wanted to overwrite it. Was there any logic to it? No, just because I wanted to show you crazy things, right? And so because I've overridden in the generic list view, it's not calling the generic list views query set at all, which would look at the model car, but instead it's calling mine that's in wacky equine view. And so when it prints out, you see a list of horses, not a list of cars, because I overrode what behavior was inside the list view class, which normally would be informed by that, but my code in here ignored it. Again, I have no purpose for this other than showing you that I can change the behavior of the parent class while creating a derived class. Now sometimes, in this case, I'm just completely overriding it, and it's like, I don't care what you were going to do before, I'm going to do something completely different. And you have to know what the rules are. I had to know what the return. It took me a while to write this. And I might have even looked at some Django source code to figure this out. But eventually, through Stack Overflow, I figured this out. So this is not trivial to write, and I'm not expecting you to write this. I just want to show you the technique. Like this keyword args, that's, that's something. I'm sure at some point I knew what it was, but I just stole that off of Stack Overflow like everybody does. So, in this def get query set, you'll see that I have just overridden and ignored the def query set from generic list view. Okay? That's one way of overriding a method. Another way of overriding a method is this get context data. So, what is get context data going to do? Well, at some level, get context data is what puts in this crazy, this list ends up going into horse list. Right? So that's, that's somehow this variable that I return here in query set ends up being put in to my context as horse list. So then I can write this loop that prints that stuff out. And that's by convention, right? It actually looks at the type of this thing and says, oh, that's a list of horses. So it makes up the variable and puts it in the context. Now where that's being done in generic list view is in a method called get context data. And so I actually don't want to completely replace get context data, although I probably could if I want because this is so simple. What I actually want to do is I want to augment the context and I want to throw something else in it. So what I want to do is I want to run the code from generic list view first. I want to get the context back from that and then I want to add something to it and then return sort of like this composite context. Okay? And it's not the, the syntax is a little scary, but it's okay. So let's take a look at get context data. Just like anything, self is the instance. Self is always the instance. KW args is a, just a way of taking all the parameters so I can pass them in. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, hey, super. Super is like calling get context data in generic list view. So go into my super class. Wacky equines view is a subclass. List view is my super class. Super get context data and pass whatever arguments were going in there. We're all good. So just call that. Do it. And pass in all the arguments. And do whatever. And that's what ends up putting in horse list. And so at that point, context is going to be a dictionary that has horse list in it. But then I want to put some more stuff in. So then that goes into generic list view and then comes back out of generic list view and gives me, and if all I did is return to context, then I really wouldn't have changed anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in this little extra key called crazy thing and put the string crazy thing in it. And then I return all that. And then eventually it goes into the template and this context finds its way into the template. And again, that's all inside of generic list view. And eventually horse list is there because of the call to the super and crazy thing is there just because I explicitly put it in. And so I have augmented without replacing. The first one I completely replaced get query set. In the second one, I called the parent and then I augmented the return value and then returned kind of the combination of what the list view did and what I want to add to the list view. So we're going to use both of these techniques coming up when we start talking about the owner 
list the owner.py code and how we can then jack in to this generic code and, and implement our owner field. So that's the next thing that we're going to do.